A lot of parents and students were hoping that President Biden would extend the pause on student loan payments and even go further by canceling some student debt. For now, that doesn't seem to be the case anytime soon, so many people are left wondering how they're going to pay it off. Our next guest tested before Congress, and he believes student loan forgiveness should be given to some. We're joined by Constantine Yanellis with the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. Good morning to you. Good to see you. Good morning. Thanks very much for uh, having me. We're happy to have you, and I, I'm curious. So how big of an issue do you think overall is student loan debt to our country and our economy? This is a massive issue. There's currently $1.7 trillion in outstanding student loan debt. And to put that in perspective, that's bigger than the economy of uh, Russia or Brazil. So this is really massive. Wow. Okay. You say some grads should have their loans wiped out, but not everyone. So whose debt do you think should be forgiven? So the, the problem with blanket student loan forgiveness is that it's a very regressive policy. People who go to college earn more than those that, di that didn't. And people who have advanced degrees, like doctors and lawyers, earn uh, even more. So what we uh, want to do is to link forgiveness to uh, income. And the way to do that is through expanding the use of income-driven repayment plans, uh, which tie people's payments to how much they earn. Okay, so are you saying, is there a certain type of earner who maybe you're saying from this point on down, that's who this should apply to? Well, what you can do is, as, as a policymaker is set a threshold. Say um, uh, you only pay if you make more than 50 or 75 or $100,000. Um, uh, uh, and then beyond that, you pay, say, 10 or 15% of uh, your income. Then people who earn high salaries, like doctors, uh, lawyers, my MBA students, mm -hmm. will end up uh, repaying their loans, whereas people who are really struggling will get substantial forgiveness. Okay, so what would be the impact, do you think, of forgiving debts for, for this particular group of people? Because you predicted it could actually widen the racial wealth gap if debts aren't looked at this way, correct? Well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't widen the racial wealth um, the gap. Um, what I'm saying is that student debt forgiveness, um, it's a very expensive way to make a very small dent in the racial wealth gap. If we forgave all student debts, 1.7 trillion, we would mm -hmm. only close the racial wealth gap by 3%, which is just not, 3% is not enough. Mm -hmm. But what about the impact on, uh, say, say students who come from families who aren't as well to do, they don't go to these elite schools. Um, how does that affect the racial wealth gap? Because I would imagine that that would have an impact then. It has an impact, but it's not the primary cause of um, the, the, the racial wealth gap. So the racial wealth gap is caused primarily one by the racial earnings gap and two by differences in real estate values. So if we're targeting the racial wealth gap, that's where we want to focus, not on student loan uh, debt, which um, really wouldn't make a big dent in the racial wealth gap. Okay, so let's talk about a related topic. What do you make of the Biden administration for giving the debt for students at for-profit colleges, including ITT? So that's di um, uh, different because in many cases, uh, there was actual fraud going on on the part of for-profit colleges. So uh, many of those borrowers are entitled to um, uh, forgiveness because they were uh, defrauded. So that's very different from blanket universal loan mm -hmm. forgiveness. Okay, so as you look at the big picture, somebody working with Booth, um, what do you think needs to happen when it comes to uh, college forgiveness? And when does this need to happen? Because as you said, it's a huge problem. We have so many students and their parents who are saddled with this heavy debt. I think we need to strengthen and expand income-driven repayment uh, plans, sign up more people uh, for these plans, even automatically um, uh, enroll them in these plans and eliminate paperwork and uh, bureaucracy, which makes it easier uh, for people to sign up for plans that link their payments to their uh, income. In terms of when it should uh, um, uh, happen, Yesterday, uh, really, yeah. the sooner, uh, the, uh, the better. But if one of these plans is uh, passed for giving ten or fifty thousand dollars of student debt, we're not going to solve the underlying problem, and we're going to be in the same place five or ten years from now. So, as I said at the top here, you actually testified before Congress. Uh, do you feel like any decision on dealing with this is uh, imminent because you've had that firsthand experience? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to ask the politicians um, uh, themselves, politicians and uh, judges. I never want to get into the business of predicting <laughs> what they're going they're going to do. It's outside well, my expertise. <laughs> well, at least you're trying, and we're going to give you that. And we appreciate you joining us and 
and uh, giving us your input and thoughts about how this should be dealt with. Constantine Nellis with the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. Great to have you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.